Hi guys, Kindia here with the Age Journal. I'm black, back to do another um, craft with me, and this time I'm going to show you what I do with the composition books, how I alter them to be fun um, craft books to use for um, journaling with instead of just a plain composition book but you get to have a pretty composition book here's two that I've done for already um, in the past um, and I thought I'd share these with you this is what we're aiming for um, I do both the inside as well as the outside so this is what we're gonna do to them and this one is I is my personal one so you can see that I have journaled in it and this is um, how I use it so um, this is you know what you can do to do to journal with it if you want um, you can use it any way you want you can use it as an art journal and glue pages together and have it be your art journal as well but let's get started so we're going to start with a composition book. You're going to gather some materials. You'll need some napkins, some book pages. Um, I just gathered this because I like the word free spirit. So we're going to cut that out and use that on the front. Um, some music sheet papers. Um, this is for my paint. You'll need a piece of sandpaper some masking tape, some parchment paper, or wax um, wax paper works fine too, um, some stamps that you like. So that's what I have here, some stamps, um, some black paint, or if you want to use a different color, um, can see on this one I use red paint because that's how we're gonna do our stamping is with paint this is where we're gonna slap our paint on to do our stamping with um, some Mod Podge and a brush with water so hopefully you can gather those things and work along with me to do this project so First thing we do is we're going to tape some parchment paper onto our book to keep the inside pages from getting dirty. So we're just going to take it and we're going to Put it right here along our book and you can see what I'm doing here and we're going to fold this down a little bit so that we have a straight edge and let's stick this side in here so I can this side so this side's going to go in here and we're gonna just wrap the pages around here and we're gonna tape this side here and then we'll go and tape the other side. First I put the tape onto the parchment paper and then I take the tape right to the edge of the uh, this tape doesn't want to stick very well, so so again. right to the edge of the book. So as we're working on it, we don't get the paper dirty. I put another piece of parchment paper, tape over the parchment paper to help reinforce this. And then we move to the 
back side and do the same on the back side. Now this is a class I used to teach, I taught in person and I decided I'd um, do it here on my channel and share it with you guys because it's just such a fun crafting project you'll get it's so fun to do with the journals and then when I'm done this journal will be in my Etsy shop and then the other the green journal I showed you will also be in my Etsy shop. Okay, now we're ready to go with that to keep our book looking nice. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take sandpaper to this because this is um really smooth and my husband used to be a painter and paint doesn't stick to a smooth surface so i kind of thought the same concept might be to, with glue like mod podge not sticking very well to a smooth surface so to help it down the road to last longer i kind of um thought the same concept would be that if you give the composition book a little grip with sandpaper that then we just need a little bit of a grip by sanding just a little bit that it would help the surface stick the, everything stick to the surface a little bit better so it doesn't take long just give it a little rough up And then we're going to wipe all the dust off because the dust will also make everything not stick to it. And see how much dust we got off of there. So you definitely want to wipe the dust off. Let it dry before you move on. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to... Um, Mod Podge the music sheet paper and the book paper onto the front of the composition book and we're going to do that by just tearing pieces of paper up and randomly adding them to the journal. Now it doesn't matter if the pages go over the edge some because we'll cut them off and then we'll have a fun little way of, I'll show you a fun little way of smoothing out the edges, making it look very vintage. So here's the Mod Podge. And I just keep it in a jar because I buy it in bulk. Because I go through it a lot. And we just stick it on and use whatever's left on our brush. You don't want to do too thick of layers because then that will add to the drying time and cause bubbles underneath and it will stick up and just do a really thin layer on both the top and under, under the bottom. Um, then you'll be good to go. You can do a little bit of overlapping but you don't want to do too much overlapping on the papers because if you do too much overlapping, oh, let me let me grab a piece of parchment paper to protect my table so that I'm not getting a bunch of mods podge over all over my table because it's so hard to clean up off of this wood. And you don't have to set the words all straight. 
you just do how you want to do it and we're going to go around the corners we're going to be covering up the black um, part of the composition book so then just press it all in with your paintbrush That helps you to push it all into the glue and like I said, whatever glue is left on your paintbrush will just press into the paper and help give you a, a protective layer on the top that um, allows for, um, you know, that gives it a, per, uh, a way for things to adhere over it as we come to the next layer um, it gets a, a nice smooth layer over the top of it so again like I said feel free to go over the edges we'll be pulling them cutting them around the top of the edges so no worries about perfection here the mess you are the better this is a get your hands dirty kind of project And if you do overlap a little bit that don't worry about that that's gonna happen because you're um, you are trying to and if you don't get everything covered as well like I have a little gap there that also don't worry about that that's gonna happen as well because we are going to be putting another layer over this so it doesn't matter these things don't matter because we don't have we don't need perfection we're just getting a layer of our first layer on here um, and we're not seeking to be perfect about it this is one of those craft projects that is all about ease and sloppiness and imperfection and having fun that's the most important thing with it is to just have fun with it You want, it's important also that you want to make sure you do have glue underneath them, that you don't leave any like pockets without glue, any air pockets, because then it will bubble up later as we're adding another layers over the top of it. So if you notice that as you put it down, it doesn't seem to stick, lift it up a little bit and get glue underneath it. We do want glue underneath everything. Even though we're doing a light layer of glue, we do want glue underneath everything. So it's kind of a delicate combination between a light layer of glue. See, I'm getting a little thick here. And uh, too much glue. 
because the more glue you add to it, the longer it's going to take to dry, and the more you have to work with this, and it's just, I don't know, it just is a lot easier when you have less glue, but you do want to make sure you have glue. Again, I have a little piece of the, the stuff showing through, a little piece of stuff showing through there, some of the black showing through there. I do want to cover a little bit of that up, so I'll add a little piece there because there's a little too much there showing through for me there. But these little spots don't bother me. And we're going to get some... Now I'm just going to pop my book open and move over to the back side and let the front dry as I'm working on the back side. You could do, besides music sheets, you could do pattern paper from um, sewing. You could do um, paper from book page, uh, not book pages, we're using book pages. You could do paper from, um, that you love from uh, your favorite designer paper and then choose um, a, a more of a muted um, type napkin instead of a colorful napkin. Uh, or if you have a background or a designer paper that is just soft muted colors, then you could still do uh, a colorful paper of napkins and then you could instead of using colorful paper of, of napkins you could also do tissue paper of sewing pattern tissue paper that would be a fun to put over a bright design paper if you had a bright design paper and then the black and tan of the muted tissue paper would kind of take the color away of that uh, or tone the color down of the designer paper and that would be real real pretty as well So there's lots of fun ways to play with this. You can get even more creative with mixed media. Um, I have one of these where I've used glass glitter, done this kind of thing on it, where I have glass glitter beads on it as well. Um, and um, you just get as creative as your heart. It, where it takes you. It's all up to you.
And you could also do it where you just do music sheet paper or dust book paper on the cover. You don't have to mix them. Um, it, that, again, is up to your preference. Um, whatever you like. Just a little bit more we need here. There we go. Now we're good. So again, you can see I left a little bit of the composition book showing through in some spots. That doesn't matter. I can't stress that enough how much that doesn't matter that we're doing that, showing that. And then you're going to want to do a little bit of drawing so that we can move on to the inside um, prepping Okay, so now that we got this dry, we can just take our scissors and this parchment paper and this tape just do not want to stick together. I prefer wax paper, but <laughs> I asked my husband to get it for me at the store and this is what he brought home. So this is what I have to use until I get done with it. <laughs> but wax paper really does work better. The stuff doesn't stick to it as as well so you don't need to be perfect about cutting just get like the major pieces off because we're going to sand around the edges here in a minute so you'll see that it doesn't matter if you're just trying to get the big big pieces of it off so you're you're not having to be perfect about it blue stick on here maybe that will help So we just got the major big scraps off and just toss those out of the way here in the garbage can so we have room to work. My little space here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the piece of sandpaper we used and we're going to just sand the edges and get any of the pieces that are still sticking over the edge off and this kind of gives it a shabby chic look as well and we're going to be inking this up at the end of the project too which looks really cool. Top edge as well, which 
gotta kind of work around the tape and everything there. kind of get at a at an angle where you're getting the edge as in like a kind of a blade so to say where you're working along with the edge of the book to cut it off and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the sanding paper and we're going to sand off any loose bits that didn't get glued down. So you're going to just take your sandpaper across the top and sand off any of those loose bits. So I had some loose bits here in the corner and I want to sand those off. See if I have anywhere else that have loose bits. I'm going to sand off any of the edges that didn't get glued down. Let me let my cat out. Sorry about that. So. Okay, I think I got all the loose bits on this side. Didn't have much. Had it all pretty glued well. Check the spine as well. Get to the back. This is part of why I do a little layer over the top of it so I don't have much loose bits, but this also helps to de-stick the Mod Podge. It smooths it out and it distresses the um, the book a little bit so it gives it an aged distressed look. I'm gonna just wipe off this little sandy bits that I got here. I'll sweep them up later. Okay so now we have a smooth soft finish on our journal and there's more little bits showing through. Again doesn't matter. Adds to the collage look that we're going for and we'll be covering up with a next later. Now we're going to move to the inside and do the collage again with the book page and the music sheet paper. So these, I like the feathers so I think I'll do the feathers kind of like on the whole thing and then I have these cute birds and I think I want to do that on the center. Um, they're made by this company. I got these while I was on vacation up in Washington. They have them in all the like gift, gifty type stores up there. And um, they just have so, so many cute um, designs. I just wanted to buy like all of them, but I had to restrict myself. Here's another one I bought with these cute birds on it, but it's PPD. I'm sure you can find them online. Um, in fact, I was gonna um, Paper Products Design USA. Um, so I'm sure you can find. Oh yeah, it's PaperProductsDesign.com. So you can go to their website and sure, I'm sure you can get some because they are the cutest. They have deer and um, owls and they had just had all kinds of really cute designs so both of these came from that paper that product that from that company so we're going to peel back the layers of the tissues until we get the la the the main layer only and we want there's three layers here, and I was able to grab 
the two layers together and just because see there's two layers here so you want to make sure you get all three all the both of these layers off and just have the main color layer and same with this one you just want to get off the two layers and have the main color layer and these tissues come apart real nice and easy which is really nice because I've worked with them before on some journals and so we're gonna just start taking apart and ripping our tissues we're gonna collage these on just like we collaged on our our um, papers but I want to very carefully rip out the picture of these birds because I want the whole picture more of that off and so I'm gonna rip down this side too because I don't want any I want it to be all rough edges I don't want any smooth edge and I'm gonna rip a little bit off the bottom And then we'll stick this in the center. This is so cute. I just love these birds so much. They're so adorable. So I think I'm going to only use these guys on the front and then just do the rest in this. So I'm going to just put this around the birds layer it up around the birds you don't really need to put it behind them because they don't we don't need to cover behind them if it overlaps just a teeny bit that's okay If we don't get all of the book cover page covered too, that's okay also. Okay, so I think we got that mostly covered. So let's go ahead and put all that down. Okay, let's put all the edges down first. And you want to be really careful with tissue paper because you can rip it easy when you're putting it down. You don't want, you kind of want to do small little tapping motions when you're sticking it on. Don't work it too much. Thin layers of Mod Podge works best. Otherwise, you're going to end up ripping it. Ripping is not the end of the world, but it's not usually what we're going for. Now, isn't that beautiful, those feathers? I just love it.
and this is all going down really nicely. little pieces of the ripped stuff that's getting in my brush somehow because I didn't see them. Oh, I got too much glue right there. Oh well, we'll survive. Okay, and then we're going to put the center on here. And make sure you layer up on the edges where it's going to be overlapping. Layer up some glue there so it will stick down on those edges. a little bit wrinkly but that adds to the charm oh I love it I love it Okay, there we go. We got our front on. So let's dry it up with our heat tool and we'll be back in a minute.
right, we got it all dried. And we're going to do the same thing with our sanding paper where we sand the edges to get the edges of the tissue paper off. nice and clean on the edges. And then we're going to take the sandpaper again, believe it or not, to the top of this. And we're going to sand off anything that's sticking out that didn't get stuck down with the um, Mod Podge again. Because there will be little bits that didn't get stuck down. And this is going to, as you can see, give it an aged, a little bit of an aged look, which is what at least I'm going for. If you don't want to do this stuff, you don't have to, but I love the way it makes it look. needing a hard sanding just a light sanding will do and we got a little bit off and it you know just blends the edges of this in even more and it just took some of the dark blue off a little bit and I love it I just love it it looks beautiful looks perfect okay now we're gonna apply our tissue paper to the, the edge in the back so we need to go around the edge of it let me get some more tissue paper for us should have had this all done ahead of time sorry about that Just take this one piece and hop it along the whole thing. Looks like, yep, that's what I'm going to do. little pieces of stuff on the back here I'm just kind of pulling off so it's not underneath the layers now let's pop this tissue on
And I'm just going to leave the rest of the... Oh, I just ripped it right there. But we'll just have a little bit more of the music paper coming through. Stopped tapping. Let's go back to tapping. More of a tap brushing than a brush brushing. Because... It's such a large piece of tissue. Make sure it's just all stuck down everywhere. I got a few spots where it, I got, but that's okay. Where the, where it's not, where it's ripped apart, but it's okay. It's not. It's not real easy to tell. Okay, let's rip this off. And we're gonna dry again. This is just turning out so pretty. I love this napkins. So we're back to sanding. Sand the edges smooth. And then we're going to run the sandpaper along the top. There, I think we got everything that wasn't stuck down. Just mostly the little pieces that I that ripped and balled up is what are pulling off here. There we go. All good. Let's dump this into the garbage again. Okay, now we've got to get the paper on the inside. Let me grab some more feather tissues. And I have this really cool feather stamp that I want to use on here. I have two stamps and as a matter of fact that I think I want to use on here. I have this peacock feather really beautiful and then I just found this heart stamp that's at the thrift st store that is shaped like with feathers into a heart so I think I'm going to use those two stamps on the when we start doing our stamping I think those will be really pretty on here so those are the two I'm going to go for. And there we go. We're back.
back at the front. Now we're done with this parchment paper. We don't really need that for sanding anymore. Actually, I'm going to keep this and use this for my paint instead of my palette. Because you might not have a palette at home, but you'll have your wax or parchment paper that you can use for your palette instead of that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, actually we're going to do our distress, our inking up first. We're going to take a brown, whatever brown you have, I'm using coffee, but whatever brown you have will be fine. And we're going to ink up around all the edges. And this just gives it a nice aged look around the edges, helps bring it together. Just makes it look finished. It looks really good when you do this. You could have you could use a black too if you prefer black. But I just like the look of an how the brown gives it an aged, makes it look vintage look it gives to it. And if you want to, you could rub some um, into the cover a little bit too if that's what you want to do but I'm fine with how the cover looks just as it is because we got a little bit of age with the music sheets and the book pages so I think we got enough age going on there with that but if you didn't weren't able to use aged papers, you know, you could certainly age it up more by doing that, by going over the whole thing with your ink. to our stamping. So we're going to take our black ink and we're going to spread a blob on our wax paper. And we're going to take a brush. Uh, let's see what clean ones I have here. I guess I'll use my Mod Podge brush. Just so dip it in your water that you have. Rinse it off real good and then dry it off and just spread your paint out in a finish manner like this and then we're going to take our stamps and we're going to Put it in there and we're gonna I'm gonna stamp it off a little bit because it's got a little too much ink on it. Let's see here. Okay, I think I'm good now. And you're gonna stamp it on there. Oh yeah, that looks real good. And I'm gonna stamp it a couple times. Then 
I'm going to take and spread my paint out again, smooth out what I put in there. I hope you can see what I'm doing with the paint itself. And when I'm done with the stamp, I'm going to set it upside down on a baby wipe because ink and stamps don't mix well together. You want to keep your stamp moist with the ink, with the, with the um, paint on it because it will ruin your stamp. So these need to be cleaned up quickly. And I'm going to stamp one of these on here. Ooh, I did a little too much ink on that one, but that's okay. And then let's dry it here in the back. Let's turn it around and we're going to go to the front. And remember we have this word that I wanted to put on here, free spirit. Um, so let's cut that out real quick. This word goes very well with all the feathers and the birds with their flowers on their heads. So I want to put this on there and I want to ink it first. So I already have ink on my Cool. So I'm just going to use whatever is left on there to ink around it. And since my Mod Podge is currently taking up, I'll just glue this on. See what side has more room, the bottom or the top? Which do I like better? I think I like it at the top better. And then that leaves me room for the stamp at the bottom. There we go. Not sure if I have room for the heart stamp on the there or not. Nope. Just that stamp. Okay. So let's dry this off. Okay. And then you can do stamping on the inside as well if you would like. I think I'm going to leave it as it is. And let's set this, take this all oh, set it aside here. Um, if you have smaller stamps, you can do a lot of stamping. Um, it just depends on your preference. Um, as you can see with this one, I did quite a bit of leaf stamping on it. And um, on the inside, all I did is put that paper down because I covered it up. And this one, you can see I did a couple different stamps as well and got a lot more stamping because they were smaller stamps than what I used and did a lot on the back. And I didn't do any stamping on the inside on that one. So um, it's all about what your preference is. And then when you're done, you just take the tape off. And your pages are all good. And you're ready to go and use this book. So that is how I, what I do with composition books and altering them. And um, I hope you like it and I hope you have fun creating and I hope you create it along with me because it is um, 
a really fun and easy craft to do. And I probably will stick a little bit of Mod Podge over this free spirit that I glued down just so it stays on there and is protected like everything else. But these two will be going in my Etsy shop. And um, I hope you guys have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to me or share the video with your friends and family. And um, I will see you guys next time. So bye. Have a great day.